or happy resurrection Sunday whatever you say Jesus was raised from the dead and it is the most important day on the Christian calendar. Um, today, I'm, for the last few weeks, I have unintentionally um, told the story of this family, Bobby, Brenda, and their children, Melissa, I'll do Brian's story today and Emily's story next week. Um, but before I get into that, let's pray. Father, I praise you and I worship you, Lord God. Hide me behind the cross. Give me words that I didn't even plan to say, Lord. And teach me well. I'm doing this sermon. Uh, how you want me to deliver it lord god this sermon is yours not mine i cast down my will and pick up your will lord hide me behind the cross in the name of jesus amen in honor of easter before we get started with today's sermon i'm going to um sing a famous Easter uh, or resurrection hymn that I love. I'm going to sing it because it's Easter and and because I love worship and I love music and I think it calls for it. Um, in celebration of the resurrection of our Lord. Okay, so let me get it up. You're, you're seeing my, you're not seeing my mouth because I have to go close to the computer to get the lyrics up. So. Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord, up from the grave. He arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with the saints to reign. He Sealed 
the dead Jesus my Lord death cannot see its prey Jesus my Savior he tore the bars away Jesus my Lord up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his bows he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with the saints to reign he Thank you, Lord, for rising this day and just saving us. Thank you, Lord, for what you did. We bless you and we praise you and we give you thanks, Jesus. You are to be praised. You are to be honored. And you are to be worshipped. God, I bless you. I praise you. I give you thanks, God. You are awesome, God. There is none like you. And we give you praise. Um, okay, so Ryan's story. Um, for two weeks, I've been going through the story of this family. Uh, as I mentioned before, two weeks ago, I did Bobby and Brenda's story um, called The Case of the Uneaten Chicken. Last week, I did Melissa's story called The Silent Scream. This week is Ryan's story and it's aptly called Mercy, The Mercy We Can't Go Beyond. Um, uh, while, um, while Ryan's parents was, were going through their issue, um, let me back up. Ryan, as you already know, was the, um, the middle son of the pastor um, of Bobby and Brenda, the only boy um, that they had. Uh, he was the middle son between two girls, and that caused him to be kind of um, not left out, but kind of overlooks overlooked because his sisters um Emma M Melissa was the oldest so she took on the responsibility and uh, Emily was the youngest so she was always protected and the baby so um outwardly um Ryan um looked like he was okay um went to church with his family did all what he was supposed to do but internally he slowly began to get angry because he he didn't know where he fit in his whole family and sometimes when a person doesn't know where they where they fit when everybody else seems to have a place um they kind of act out and they kind of um they kind of act out in several different ways so um ryan when he um was about 15 when he was about 12 he was so desperate to find where he fit, 
fit in, to find what he was good at, to find his place uh, in his family and in the world. Um, um, but um, he just couldn't. And he, his Bobby was so busy that Bobby didn't see that his son was struggling to find his place and struggling to fit in. So uh, Ryan went through that awkward stage of just not uh, being able to fit in the awkward. Um, and then when he, when he went uh, through that stage, he, um, met this guy named Tony and Tony uh, was not a Christian. Tony was kind of a rough around the edges person kind of um, kind of just did what he wanted and and did you know his parents didn't really have any rules and because um, Bobby and Brenda were so busy with the church they didn't really see their son was slipping away and message to parents um, watch your children and be diligent where your children are concerned because um, they need you and sometimes as I said last week the, the screen could be silent uh, they could seem fine, but um, something could be going on internally. And never let your work or your church or whatever come before your children. Or always let them feel that you're a safe place to talk to about um, your uh, their issues. Because kids, um, kids nowadays are going through a lot and I think we're doing a disservice by just passing our kids um, a kind of uh, some, some of us when we brush our kids to the side when we say when we say oh they're fine and we just uh, clothe them but we don't really invest into them and that's what happened uh, to Ryan, why he got involved with Tony. And when he was about 15, he, he was hanging around with Tony for a while. And when he was about 15, um, he, he, when he first started hanging out with Tony when he was 12, he didn't really do what Tony did. He was just there, but he didn't really drink or anything, but he hung around with him. But when you hang around with somebody that is not good for you, no matter how hard you try, no matter how many times you resist, uh, nine times out of ten, you will succumb. And when he was 15, he, succ he succumbed to Tony and had his first drink because he just got tired of, of his so-called friends making fun of him and doing all of this. And he just got tired of it. Um, what ha that's what happened. Um, and then the the drinking to one drink became two, became three, became four, and um, he he got drunk for the first time at fifteen, and then his parents weren't home at that time, so they didn't find out. So eventually, he kept. Because they didn't find out the first time, he kept doing it and doing it and doing it and getting drunk. Uh, after he got drunk, he he um, 
started looking at por pornography and then looking at pornography uh, led to sleeping with girls and uh, trying recreational drugs and just living uh, a lifestyle that wasn't pleasing to God and, and doing everything that he uh, could have done and so, and sometimes when you've done one thing and gotten away with it you feel like you're, you're going to get away with this forever and nobody's going to find you out and that's a dangerous place to be because one day you will get caught and one day his dad caught him when he was about 17 he said he would um, Ryan said he was sick but really he went out with Tony and they were drinking at Tony's house and his father um, Bobby came home to just check on Ryan and Ryan wasn't home um, but one of the other youth boys saw Ryan going into Bobby's car and um, so he asked one with that boy um, to tell him where he saw he saw Ryan going in Tony's car, not Bobby's car. Um, and Bobby asked the boy what, where to find Tony. So uh, Bobby drives over to Tony's house, and and um, so and Bobby and. Bobby and his son have an altercation with screaming and yelling and saying you don't understand me blah 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 so the end of that alter altercation Ryan was like you, you know what I don't need church I don't need you and this is just not going to happen I'm I'm moving out keep in mind he was only 16 and his father said well you can't move out and Ryan said watch me so the next day Ryan at 16 moved in with Tony and then Bobby followed him to Tony's house and dragged him back home because he he legally wasn't letting him move out. He was only 16. But when when um, Bobby dragged him back home, he moved out again the next week. And the cycle kept on going. And sometimes that's how God is with us. Uh, where we say we're going our own way and the Lord just keeps on uh, reeling us back. We go our own way and God keeps on reeling us back. So this is what, because um, God will always find you in the places where you least expect him to find you. you. And he will reel you back until you have no choice. But in this case with, with, with Bobby and Ryan there was this is about the five or six time where this has happened where Bobby has moved out and no where Ryan has moved out and Bobby has drove drove over to get him and the, and so, and then this time Bobby says you know what if you want to be on your own, you can be on your own. I've given up. I can't do this anymore. 
I can't handle this anymore and this is this has got to stop I can't do this anymore I have a church to run I have your sisters to raise and they want to be raised you don't seem to want your family you don't seem to want your life so I'm I'm done and so for the last time uh, Bobby just left him at Tony's house instead of bringing him, bringing him home and sometimes that's what God will do sometimes God will leave us where we are not because he's washed his hands of us like Bobby did with Ryan but because he knows how to how to crush us so that the sweet juices come out of us and sometimes when he leaves in when he leaves us in a circumstance he wants uh, the pressure and the and the crushing to bring sweetness out of us to bring more out of us than than happiness and happiness and no troubles will bring out of us so so after that day Ryan keeps on living with Tony and then living his wild life and doing all kinds of things and um and then at a club one night he meets Sarah and Sarah is she's a knockout she's so um, pretty so Ryan uh, he's like 19 at this time and Ryan takes her home and they kind they have a one night stand so Sarah so Sarah leaves and when Sarah leaves Ryan just keeps on going with his old ways of of you know women and drinking and doing all this kind of stuff wild living and then um about four months later uh Ryan gets a text from Sarah and he, and she says I need to talk to you and um and then they meet at a restaurant so at this time Ryan had um really forgotten about Sarah and what they they were doing so at the at the restaurant Sarah tells Ryan that she's pregnant and that she's expecting a baby so this news floors Ryan he doesn't know what he's gonna do he doesn't know how to be his dad he, he feels like he has no family so what happens is for the first time in about three years he calls his dad and says well remember they hadn't seen each other since that that last altercation at Tony at Tony's when Bobby said that he was done he was finished and he called Bobby and and said but said dad I met this girl one night and now she said she's pregnant and Bobby was kind of still mad at his son but Ryan is still his son so um, so through this tragedy they started talking and they started 
uh, being with each other again and then when and then so um, through Sarah's pregnancy um, Ryan became responsible he dropped all the bad friends he knew he started taking responsibility and things were great so Sarah had the baby and they were actually in love by this point so when Sarah had the baby uh, they got married Be and and Ryan thought well this is his life now and this is what is going on but when the baby was born because babies are a lot of work and all the stress uh, Ryan felt that he couldn't handle it so he took off and left a note um, with for Sarah just saying I'm sorry I can't do this and Sarah uh, at first was really upset understandably and she just um, didn't she just didn't know what to do I've got to come back um, and finish this story so I'm gonna come back and finish it